Hello students, so today we are going to discuss about uh, reproduction in organisms. This is the first chapter of class 12. If you look after any kind of standard uh, class 12 book, you will find this particular chapter as your first chapter. So we will be discussing here about the uh, concepts regarding this particular uh, section of your uh, textbook. Uh, obviously these uh, videos will contain a series and for that uh, you need to cope up with all those things together. Um, in this particular section, we will be discussing about reproduction, types of reproduction, uh, basic concepts regarding those types and what are the different uh, steps of these reproduction and furthermore we will be discussing about a uh, few more questions and answers which are uh, quite important for on the perspective of uh, your board exams as well as that of the competitive exams like NEET and other uh, exams what you can think of. Uh, so let us start. So what is this reproduction? Reproduction is basically a biological process in which an organism gives rise to young ones similar to itself. Try to understand. It is what? It is a biological process. Let us break down this whole statement. It is what? It is a biological process, right? And it produces what? It produces the organisms which are young and similar to their parents. Clear? Example, if you take an example of a small puppy, then that puppy look similar to that of their parents because both of them are dogs and they are small, they are young, right. So this is what it is meaning that reproduction is what? It is a biological process and it produces young ones which are similar to the parents, clear. Now next of what we have, we have something called lifespan. Why do we call lifespan? Because each and every organism of the earth is mortal, right. No one on the earth is immortal, that means it will take birth and it will die after a certain span of time. This span of time for which the organism is living on the earth is called the lifespan of an organism. It starts with birth and it ends with death of an organism. Clear? So, in this whole lifespan of an organism, there is a small portion or a small time in their life when the organism becomes reproductively active after which it becomes what reproductively active that means after this is point of time whatever life it has in this span of their life they are reproductively active that means they can reproduce right so this particular small span of time when they are becoming reproductively active that thing is called what that thing is called puberty it is called what it is called puberty so the point of the time when it is becoming reproductively active that point of time <coughs> sorry that point of time is called what it is called puberty right any lifespan before this puberty any lifespan before this puberty starting from the birth till the puberty of the organism is called juvenile phase and after puberty till the death of an organism is called the vegetative phase. Now what is this juvenile phase? Juvenile phase is the non-reproductive phase that means the phase in which the organism cannot reproduce right that is called what it is called the juvenile phase. Now what is this puberty? Puberty is basically transforming an organism from non-reproductive phase to the reproductive phase clear and what about the vegetative phase? Vegetative phase is the phase of an organism where it is reproductively active and it can reproduce to produce new organisms. I hope this thing is clear to all of you. Now let us move ahead and see the different types of reproduction. So reproduction are of two different types. One is asexual type mode of reproduction and the second one is sexual mode of reproduction. Right? Now what is this asexual mode of reproduction? When offsprings are produced by a single parent with or without the formation of the gamete, it is called asexual reproduction. Try to understand. In this process of reproduction, in this process of reproduction, if only one parent is involved, if only one single parent is involved to produce the next generation, then such kind of reproduction is called asexual reproduction. Obviously, we will be discussing much more detail of this asexual reproduction further on. But for now, remember what I said that this reproduction or this asexual reproduction involves only one single parent. Clear? The next one is what? The next one is sexual reproduction. When two parents participate in the process of reproduction and it produces gamete, that kind of reproduction is called what? It is called sexual reproduction. Now this sexual reproduction is much more complex and in this particular type of reproduction, how many parents are involved? Two parents are involved. How many parents are involved? Two parents are involved. So both of these two parents produces gametes. These gametes fuses with each other 
and they produce a new organism now what are the two parents that are present here and what are the two parents that are needed here the first category of parent that is required are males the first category of parent that are required they are called males the scientific notation of the males is this one right and the second type of parent that is required are females the second category of parent that is required it is called females and this is its notation right so sexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction where two parents are involved one is a male the other one is a female the male produces the male gamete the female produces the female gamete and thus they fuse with each other to produce a new organism how they fuse when they fuse what is the process of this fusion what is the process of male gamete formation female gamete formation we will discuss so keep tight and listen to each and everything very clearly as we said that we are going to clear some basic concepts here and on these concepts now we will build our knowledge so the first type is what the first type is asexual reproduction now what is this asexual reproduction in this method a single parent is capable of producing the offspring try to understand whatever we will see here regarding the asexual reproduction in each of those types and processes we will see only one single parent is involved not more than one single parent can be involved in the process of asexual reproduction the offsprings that are produced are exactly similar to that of their parents and their genetic constitution is similar now what, what do you mean by about the genetic constitution very simple i guess you know uh, we have cells inside the cell we have nucleus inside the nucleus we have the dna right so the genetic arrangement means the arrangement of the dna inside the parental organism and the newly formed organism is similar and that is why we can term them as what we can term them as clone we can term them as what clone i hope this thing is looking like done but it is not done it is c l o n e the exact term is c l o n e so why do we call them clone because they look exactly similar looking exactly similar means what they have their genetic constitution exactly similar to that of their parents clear now this process of asexual reproduction is very much familiar in case of whom in case of single celled organism and in case of organisms which has a simple arrangement simple very simple arrangement so it is common in case of single celled organism and in case of the organism which has simple arrangement clear in case of simple unicellular oh now what is this unicellular organism let let us remind what is this unicellular organism unicellular organisms are those organisms which are made up of only one single cell right so in case of simple unicellular organisms cell division is itself the mode of reproduction in case of let us repeat once again in case of simple unicellular organisms cell division is itself the mode of reproduction once again in case of simple unicellular organisms cell division that means the dividing of a single cell into two new cells is itself a mode of reproduction clear now they are of following types now this asexual reproduction are of following types now we are going to discuss and describe what are the different types of asexual reproduction clear so asexual reproduction remember so asexual reproduction is what it is a process or it is a type of reproduction in which only one single parent is involved right now what is the first type of asexual mode of reproduction that is fission what is it fission right now fission can be of different types like uh, binary fission multiple fission we will go for those things later on but let us first understand what is the meaning of the term division what happens in this fission process so basically when a single organism divides itself into two organisms and rapidly grows to an adult it is called fission try to understand when a single cell divides into two new cells and each of these two new cells develops into an adult very fast such kind of process is called what it is called fission now you might be thinking sir uh, we have studied about cell division in class 11 in that process uh, in that chapter we have studied about something like mitosis in that mitosis our teacher said that a cell divides itself into two new cells and each of the cells looks similar to that of their parents is this process of mitosis and fission similar i will say they are quite similar but they have some small fine line of difference what is it the fine line of difference is this much only that the process of mitosis takes place in multicellular organisms the process of mitosis takes a long period of time whereas this process of fission takes place in unicellular organism and this process of fission is very fast clear 
Now, this process of fission is very much famous in case of amoeba and paramecium. Amoeba reproduces with or amoeba increases their numbers with the process of this uh, fission, specifically binary fission and paramecium increases their numbers by multiple fission. That means when a single cell divides to produce more than two cells, it is called multiple fission, right? So here you can see in the diagram itself that we have our parent amoeba, which divides, which whose nucleus divides into two new nucleus and eventually two new daughter amoeba are formed. Now you might be thinking, sir, why daughter amoeba? Very simple, because they on the next go are going to produce new organisms again. So that is why they are called daughter amoeba. The next one is what? The next one is budding. The next one is what? The next one is budding. So what happens in this budding? In case of certain organisms, here I have given the example of yeast. So let us take the example of yeast. Even in your book, you can see that the, there is an example of yeast only. So in case of yeast, what happens? It produces a small bud-like structure. You can see this one. This is a small bud-like structure. It is what? It is a small bud-like structure. It is what? It is a small bud-like structure. Now this bud-like structure eventually grows into a new organism and then gets detached from the parent's body. Such kind of process of asexual reproduction is called what? Budding. It is called what? It is called budding, right? So once again, what is written out here? It is said, it is saying that in case of yeast, the parent organism produces a small bud which eventually grows into a new organism and detaches from the parent. You can see it here in the diagram, flow diagram also, that this parent yeast has produced a small bud. That bud has grown into a new organism and then it gets detached from the parent's body. So this is another type of asexual reproduction. The final one is called sporulation. Sporulation, try to understand the term, sporulation, sporulation. Do you find any kind of similarity with any kind of word? Yes, it is spores. So basically, these organisms produces what? They produce spores. And from these spores, new organisms are formed. From these spores, new organisms are formed. Example, the kingdom fungi members. I guess you know that the whole animal world is divided into different, uh, whole, whole uh, living world, not the animal world, I'm very sorry. Whole living world is divided into five different kingdoms. Monera, Protista, Fungi, Planty, Animalia, right? So in the members of the fungi kingdom and some small plants like algae, they reproduce by the means of sporulation. They produce some spores and those spores are called what? They are called zoospores. They are called what? They are called zoospores. These are microscopic motile structures which can move here and there and they can produce a new organism when the situations, when the conditions are favorable. So what we have studied? We have studied what is reproduction, what are the different types of reproduction. We have seen what happens uh, to the organism uh, that is the puberty. Uh, before puberty it is called, uh, what phase it is called? It is called it is called non-reproductive phase or juvenile phase, right? And after the puberty, it is called reproductive phase or vegetative phase, right? And then we have seen that the reproduction are of two different types. One is asexual, the second one is sexual. And in case of asexual, only one single parent is involved. So if you see any one of these three process, if you see amoeba's fission, it involves only one single parent. If you see budding, it involves only one single parent. And if you see the sporulation process, I haven't given any kind of diagram for this one. But if you see this sporulation process also, I can assure you that in this process also only one single parent is involved. Clear? So asexual reproduction means only one single parent is involved. In case of sexual, there are two involvement of two different parents parents so how this sexual reproduction occurs what are the different steps of this sexual reproduction as i have said earlier that this sexual reproduction is very much complex that is why we have divided this process of sexual reproduction into different steps so in the next video we are going to learn that what are the different steps of this sexual reproduction and how this sexual reproduction occurs so till then go through all these things of your book i hope the concepts will get clear if you have any doubts you can ask me anytime in the comments below Clear? So thank you all of you.